We are starting a brand new series, the five things, five things I learned the hard way. My staff asked me, Pastor, why don't you teach about some things you've learned the hard way? I said, there are not enough tissues in the auditorium. (laughs) But we decided to do that anyway. So we'll see how it turns out. I'm not sure how it'll turn out. You'll have to be a judge of that. But uh, how many know my story? You've, you've heard our story, Drenda, our family story of being in debt and impoverished for nine years, living hand to mouth, being desperately financially <laughs> broke under extreme stress. Uh, one day I woke up in the morning of uh, my face numb, my tongue numb, my arms numb, uh, panic attacks. I went to the doctor. They couldn't have anything wrong. They said after all of these years of financial dysfunction, that I'd lived under that my body was shutting down. My hormones were out of whack. And uh, one doctor even said, it's gonna be interesting to see how this progresses. I said, I don't th- no, I don't think so. <laughs> of course, God had to teach us how to battle the spirit of fear and how to learn his kingdom. And as we began to learn his ways of doing things, we created businesses, our life changed, began to pay cash for things. I mean, for, can you imagine nine years living like that, digging in cushions for pennies to buy happy meals, and then being able to walk into a dealership and pay cash for a car? I'll take that car, that color, and no finance office, I'll just pay cash. Can you imagine the feeling that was like? That still is amazing to me to see that happen. Then to build our house and have it paid for, and Drenda got to design that house. That is beyond words, really, uh, unless you lived it out. It's just beyond words to see that happen. We discovered the kingdom of God, and we were excited. We are excited about it. We want to tell everyone about it. Because as I looked upon the landscape of the body of Christ and friends and people that I knew, I didn't see them enjoying this kind of impact. I didn't see this happening. And I knew that we had tapped into something that we needed to tell people about. I mean, you tell people about sales, don't you? Hey, you got to go down to so-and-so store. They're having a sale, right? I mean, people talk about good things. You got to try this restaurant out. You know, you, you talk about things that are exciting, but people think of God, they think of religion. That's not too exciting. But we had tapped into what the Bible said is the good news of the kingdom, and we were excited about it. We wanted to tell everyone about it. And as we told people, it kind of happened like it did for David. You know David and Goliath, right? He took out Goliath. Remember David? The shepherd took out Goliath. First Samuel chapter 22, King Saul was bothered because David had so many people celebrating him. He was jealous of the acclaim. And David ran from King Saul. He ran to a cave. We find this listed in 1 Samuel 22 verse 1. David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. When his brothers and his father's household heard about it, heard about him taking out Goliath, they went down there. All those who were in distress, in debt, discontented, gathered around him. Well, this is what happened. People, we found out that people want to hear about how to get out of debt, discouragement, and distress. Pretty popular topic. God led us to launch this church in 1995, not because we needed a job, but because we wanted to tell people what we had discovered. This church was put here because of you, that we could share with you how our lives changed, how the kingdom of God changed our lives from nine years, panic attacks, financial dysfunction, all kinds of problems, judgments, IRS liens, no money, to living debt-free and having a great time in life. We found out that people want to know how to do that. And so the church began to grow. We didn't really know much about pastoring a church, actually nothing. (laughs) And so we had this concept that we would try to drag people to success, try to drag them to the kingdom. Look, you know, if you know my wife, have you ever been around someone that you're talking about some kind of food and they said, oh, you've never tasted this? Here, and they stick their spoon in your face. (laughs) If you're with us anytime eating and you say, I've never had that. Drenda will instantly take her spoon and stick it in your face, say, oh, you got to try that. You got you to, no you, no, you have to taste this. Because she, want, she loves to share good things. And we thought if we could just get people to taste the goodness of God, they'd be hooked, you know? And so we had this, as pastors, we began to pour into people and we would, you know, t- spend time with people and try to help them understand that this is really good. Take a bite. This is awesome. We thought we could 
kind of drag them to success, just kind of move them towards God. And as I said, we'd have marathon counseling sessions. We would pay their bills. Uh, we did marriage counseling. Then we'd pay for a cruise so they could spend time together. I mean, we just thought if they could just experience, let's take some pressure off. You know, if they could just experience the goodness of God, they'd just be hooked. And after paying people's bills and paying for cruises and talking for hours and hours with people, a lot of people's lives were changed. But you know, we found out a lot of people's lives weren't changed. And what happened was we began to carry the weight of 200 people and not just the weight of knowing them, the weight of their problems. I mean, they're telling us all their issues, their problems, their marriage problems, their financial bills. I mean, not only am I thinking, is my phone bill been paid, but has their phone bill been paid? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? And so that's not healthy. In fact, it almost drove us out of the ministry. This, the people thing. I said, I, I love God. I love the church. I love the kingdom of God. But this people thing, I'm just learning. Maybe I'm not quite so much in favor of that. You know, it just was getting tedious. So a traveling pastor came through and he says, Gary, all you owe your people is an example. You know, just, and you're having fun. If you're not having fun, why would they want to join you? And I thought about that. I wasn't having fun. I was stressed out. Now, wife and I, we had a great marriage. I mean, we, had, we were having fun. We were enjoying the kingdom. But like I said, the people thing was wearing us out. And I, I kind of began to think about that. You know, we were living a life where we thought we had an obligation to drop everything and be available to everyone at any time. But we found out they didn't help them. We really did. We found out that really wasn't their answer. And uh, so, you know, we were, we were prospering and we were telling people about how good God is. And so we were building a house. We thought, we, God, we prayed this way. God, help us build a big house. We need the space, but make it look small. <laughs> you know, because we didn't want to offend people. Like, you know, it's so stupid. That didn't help. We had a call from a guy leading a Bible study while we were building our house. Uh, we're praying for you, Pastor, because we don't know why you need such a big house. Really? That's your concern? What about your family? You can't even pay your bills. I think you should be praying about that. <laughs> or asking me how I paid for mine. You know, gain some wisdom here, right? But, you know, maybe they'd be happy if we lived in a pup tent in the state park. I don't know. Maybe we'd find some place of, you know, that they'd be comfortable with that. But we began to kind of deal with the people thing. We got emails criticizing us. Uh, we got emails. We get emails all the time. We got one about a month ago. It says, you need to stop driving that gas guzzling Escalade. Well, it was given to me free. Would you drive it if it was given to you free? I mean, gas is only $2 a gallon for heaven's sake. I mean, come on. <laughs> all right, let's write this down. Don't let people shame you out of the blessing of God. Don't feel embarrassed. Oh, that's a beautiful dress you have on. Oh, this old thing? I bought this down at Goodwill. Well, if you did, that's fantastic. Nothing wrong with getting a good deal, but don't tell them. Why do you have to tell them that? You don't have to tell them that. Just say thank you. But we let them shame us because of the blessing of God. It's not good. Isaiah 61, speaking of your heritage, you're right. Jesus said this scripture was fulfilled when he came into the earth realm. Instead of your shame, you'll receive a double portion. And instead of disgrace, you'll rejoice in your inheritance. And so you'll inherit a double portion in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. That's more than enough, friend, a double portion. You know, I've no, I know what it's like to have shame and you can't pay your bills. You get those little envelopes in the mail that are real thin from the bank, and you know it's not statement time. <laughs> Or you're out to eat and your visa's declined and you got to pay for a whole party you said you'd pay for. I understand what it's like to have shame and have a party at my house and the electric guy knock on the door and want to cut the power off in the middle of the party. I know what that's like. But the church wants to shame you for the blessing of God. Don't let them do that. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCasey.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.